welcome to Fat Quarter Shop's Friday live stream. I'm so excited today. I have Lisa Alexander and Susan Aki, and they are the authors of the brand new book, Celebrate with Quilts. And we're gonna just talk all about the book. Sorry, I'm echoing in my um, I'm echoing in here, and it's driving me crazy. So I am. We're gonna do a trunk show. We're gonna talk about two upcoming quilt alongs. We're gonna do giveaways. We're gonna have Q and A. We're gonna show all the quilts. It's gonna be a ton of fun. So uh, Lisa and Susan, why don't you talk about um, how you came to us with the idea of the book? Well, uh, Susan and I were. First of all, we both love block books, but then the other thing we really talk about all the time why we even started to make quilts. And I know the very first time, first really real quilt I ever made was with my sister, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, we've already been talking and laughing so much I'm already losing my voice. Um, but it was a sampler quilt as a wedding gift. So Susan and I keep, you know, kept talking about this kind of the same thing. Uh, like what was your first quilt you ever made? I just made like, just a bunch of patches together just to see if I could do it. Okay. But then I went into major giving gifts to everybody. Right, yeah. yeah. So, the, you know, I think that's really what the joy is for all of this. So, Susan and I love when we see everything on social media where everybody redoes their whole house and puts out all their Fourth of July quilts and everything. So it was more just a celebration of quilters, quilt making, and quilt giving. Is that what Susan absolutely yeah absolutely you know the whole point is is just playing with blocks for me I absolutely love to make quilt blocks I love to make practice blocks if I never ever get something quilted it's okay because I've made the blocks yeah. I think making the blocks is like the funnest part like putting yeah, the quilt is. all together uh, I don't even yeah. care about that well no actually I like putting the quilt all together to see if the quilt math worked but it's the borders when I get to board. That's why I do a lot of piece borders because the measuring part, I'm thinking, oh boy, I hope I did that one yeah. right. Oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> well, do you ever have people ask you, how can you give a quilt away? Oh, that's the best part. Oh. Yeah, and that's what I think yeah. with as much sewing as we all do, I would always like, as long as I know from the beginning that I'm making this as a gift, then you're thinking about them the whole time and you know all of that, and then you don't have any problem giving it away absolutely yeah. Yeah. yeah but if you've made it for yourself like you've picked everything you love from the very beginning no that quilt's not gonna leave the house yes. yeah sorry it's well, mine one, one thing early on that like my beginning quilting teacher said uh she goes oh if you make a mistake give it away and i thought how oh. rude you know that was <laughs> and i didn't understand until the end what she meant by that is you'll always see the mistake but as a gift, nobody yeah. else will see it. And so that's really important also. Don't, you know, point it out and say, oh, my corners don't meet right or my, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. But at first I thought, boy, that is so rude. And, uh, <laughs> well, see, but I, I try understand. real hard yeah. not, but I try real hard not to have a mistake like that because I always heard we can't if all you be point you. it out, you have to take it out. <laughs> oh, yeah, so. okay. I, I hadn't heard that till now, so. Yeah. <laughs> So, so each, I do a lot of free sewing. 60 blocks, and one of the things that y'all talked about in the beginning when you were talking to Sarah, Jocelyn, and I was you really wanted it to be like an encyclopedia of oh, yeah, blocks. Yeah. So I No, mean, we really wanted a 6,000-page book, Kimberly, <laughs> but you stopped us. <laughs> you know, I did it, have to stop y'all at some point. <laughs> not not y'all. Don't put y'all in there. It's <laughs> <laughs> you put the brakes on. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, it is so mindless to be able to somewhat follow instructions and know that with some a great de deal of security that you're going to achieve yeah. this quilt. You know, from your tutorials, from using pre-cuts, from all these different ways that gives you confidence. But also on the same hands to make things a little bit special and a little bit different and unique we wanted you to again have an encyclopedia to where you can just keep on using uh different blocks and and think of things differently in different ways different colors different layouts so 
Well, I think our biggest thing was is coming down to the number of blocks because we could have gone on and on and on. You and did then, go on and on and on. <laughs> well, well, 6,000 pages, Kimberly, where is it? <laughs> <laughs> but the other part was is that um, having the varied sizes, deciding what oh, were yeah, the varied yeah. sizes going to be mm -hmm. because we, Lisa and I would have put three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We would have, I mean, it would have truly been the encyclopedia. So that was the biggest break part for us. And then once we narrowed that down, it got so much easier. And then it was just a matter of eliminating, you know, because we did have a big pile. Yeah. And like you'll see in the uh, trunk show, like one of the samplers, we were able to achieve big blocks by comparing, you know, four nine inch blocks mm -hmm. and things like that. So that gives the block a whole nother different look than you would have ever, ever seen it. So it really is a combination of how you can mix all that three, six, nine, and 12 in different combinations. Exactly. So do you want to start showing the quilts? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Yay! Yes. That's what I came for. And so a lot of you already have the book, but if you don't have the book, you can get it at Fat Quarter Shop or any of your favorite quilt shops. It's called Celebrate with Quilts. And the first part of the book is 60 blocks. And like Susan said, in the size is 3, 6, 9, 12. Behind it are 13 quilts and a cross stitch. We're going to show you all the quilts. I'm going to tell you the size. A lot of them are scrappy. And uh, you can ask questions, and what we're gonna try to do is answer the questions while we're on the quilt. So if you have a question about a specific quilt, get that question in there. Can I say something before you start the quilt? Sure. Okay, so when we started the, um, doing the quilts, Lisa and I decided to do the celebration of the quilts and maybe holiday type things. And the first thing I would come, she would say, we would say a holiday and I'd say, oh wait, we can't forget that holiday. Oh wait, we right. can't forget that. You know how many holidays come in a year? That book could have been really big, Kimberly. Yeah. You know, I'm so sorry for that. You put the brakes on. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me also say Susan is very, very fast. And so the majority of the quilts are also made by Susan yeah. too. She's, she's a speedster. So first one up. This is Blueprint, and we're going to have a quilt along coming up with this. We're going to talk about it a little bit later in the show, but it's 54 by 63. Susan Peace, this one, it is. it uses 15 fat quarters. The front is mostly peachy keen. And oh, then the back is a ruby star fabric. Okay, so you want to know the story behind why it's called Blueprint? Yes. And why it has the blocks like that? Yes. When I, because I've always said it, and I, I'll, I say it here a lot, um, I love to make practice blocks because I know I, what I can accomplish with a practice block. Well, if you have all, every one of those blocks in that quilt fit a size of the blocks that we offer in the, you know, the 60 blocks. So you don't have to have that big nine inch block if you don't want. Make it a nine inch piece block anywhere you want. All of those little blocks can fit a special block. So you can make your own sampler quilt with a blueprint right there for you without you having to piece it and figure all the math out. The yeah. math is done for you. Yeah, and no sash, you wouldn't have to do sashing or anything. Exactly. And like that nine patch, another quilt. they're all three inch blocks. You'll see another quilt that we basically use this same blueprint. Two more quilts. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And you won't, you don't, you won't even be able to to see that. So, do you want to answer? A question? Yeah. Let's... So Jane asks, what level would you say the blocks are in the book? I think they're all the way from beginner to advanced. This quilt is definitely beginner, and we will be doing a book too, I'm sure. And um, oh. Moda says hi from the team. Hey, hey girls. Hi. I told y'all I was off today, right? This is where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the first quilt. The second quilt is much bigger. I love this one. Now that one I actually thought of a Father's Day gift. Oh, yeah. I just thought that was fun. It's just so because classic. It doesn't, it doesn't yeah. say yeah and and the setting like i would love to actually even just do this quilt and not this is me being lazy not piece of block but piece of piece of fabric in there and show off the quilting but just look at just how fantastic the setting is uh but Absolutely. again that's where this is, this is interchangeable if you want to do different blocks or this block uh that's the beauty of all that 
And this one's called Blue Willow. It's 62 by 83. Susan pieced it. Kind of show that. And I would say this one's probably intermediate to advanced. And then this is the backing. It's just, it's a um, Zen sheet composition. But the quilting is beautiful. Let's see, do you think we could do top cam and show? Thank you, quilting? Sue Rogers. <laughs> it really shows up best on the back, doesn't it though? Yeah, the, okay, yeah, we'll do that. So you can see it on the, oh yeah, there look you can at that. really see it. Isn't that gorgeous? Wow. I never would have picked that, the diamonds and then all the feathers inside that. So it really complements how geometric everything is on the front. Let's show the front. Let me show the front with the quilting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's do this. Oh, my gosh. It's yeah, so Sue much harder sees. to see on yeah. the, with the see? prints. Yeah. But it's funny how Sue, my long arm quilter, will see something that I would never have seen. And Susan's quilts are all washed, so they're so mm -hmm. soft and, and just ready to snuggle under. As Kimberly's cringing because she's not a washer. <laughs> yeah. Oops, which way? Okay. Okay, and so the, the blocks on that. The previous quilt, the blue and white, that is, uh, looks like Camille fabric, but it's probably, Susan, what is it a mix of? Okay, it's a mix of just the, the different backgrounds that had the navy, and it's a uh, um, fig tree, gingham, and a uh, Bella solid for, okay. uh, I think I, it was a Bella solid, I don't remember, um, for the blue, because my navy blues don't all match. That's why it ended up being a light quilt. So this quilt, actually worked out this is one of the last quilts made and we needed something to represent fall and i already had the um pieced um triangle paper for oh, those yeah, half square triangles right. and they were just sitting there with literally they've been sitting there for over a year and i thought oh wait that'll work and i knew i didn't have enough fabric for the border so that quilt is really easy to make larger or smaller because it doesn't have border fabric you have to measure it just it has the pieces and as as janice asked earlier beginner immediate or intermediate etc well this is the skills are beginner that doesn't mean that there's still not a lot of sewing so mm -hmm. it's what's nice is it's simple repetitive sewing mm -hmm. so somewhat mindless and then you get a very sophisticated very elaborate look by the time you break down all the blocks and this one's called the courtyard quilt susan pieced it the backing is pieced also it uses fat eights and it's 67 inches square and uh it's just you know triangles just triangle paper and nine patches and square and squares um people love the backing and uh, Lisa and Susan are scrappy queens. We love their eye for pulling together prints and colors. Because it's fun. Yes. And, and they did it, such a great job photographing this particular quilt because it literally was photographed in a courtyard. So. Uh, oh, that was a cool yeah. venue that yeah. those photographs were taken. That was a really cool place. This one I think I'm going home with because my daughter's favorite color is green and I haven't made her any green quilts. So, uh, okay, so that quilt is actually two blocks that are the exact same blocks. So it's the big block and then the little block is inside of it. Yeah. But we needed something to represent St. Patrick's Day or spring. I mean, that, that could go so many different ways. But like I said, when, once we get started on the holidays, we kind of didn't stop. Yeah, well, and we again, all the holidays. Blue for Father's Day, add red. It's a Christmas quilt. I mean, again, just the, the layout and the idea and the concept and then just get going and have, have fun with it. And I love exactly. the, the secondary design yeah. right here. That's my favorite thing when a quilt has a secondary design that you actually didn't plan for, but it works out that way. And then there's the bottom. This one's called Irish Weave. It's 70 inches square. P Susan pieced it and she did a piece backing. The piece backings are not, uh, the instructions are not in the quilt, but this is a way that you can use your leftover fabrics if you don't have just a huge piece of fabric to put on the back. This one's fat quarter friendly. And what, what level of experience do you think this one would be? That one actually, I mean, 
if you take your time, there's not many quilts you can't accomplish. You know, a square yeah. and a square. I mean, take your time. You'll get. You won't. You won't mess up those points. And don't be afraid to use your seam ripper. It's okay to stop and go slow. You don't have to race to it. I personally would say that's a medium. I mean, it's not a beginner. Just because of the square and square. If you didn't have the and the points on the um, the edges, I try not to like knock off my points. You know, on the rows and all of that. If you go slow, you can accomplish that. One of the things and by the way, oh. Sue Rogers also does all of my backings for me. I hand them to her. Oh, okay. I, I hate using backings. Sue, can you can I call you? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> one of the things that I love that I I've noticed both Kimberly and Susan do are these light borders. Mm -hmm. So I think between the influence of modern quilting and you know I don't really know why, but we've gotten away from putting borders on quilts and. Mm -hmm. I love, you know, a border on a quilt, but I really, I tend to go dark or like that, but I've noticed both of y'all do that quite successfully. Mm -hmm. I like to do light on the border. I like to do light on the back. And then um, Marsha wants to know what fabric line it is. To me, it's looking like a lot of uh, Camille greens. It is, it is for sure. And this is definitely Camille fabric. So I think it's, I don't see I think it's all. I think it's all Camille. Yeah, the, I think it's all the Camille. The greens and Because shoreline. you know what? Oh, coming yeah. up would be fantastic that, in this they were perfect for um the saint patrick's day to me they just looked like saint patrick's day this one's my favorite oh yeah me too i love this one. Oh, that was fun so this would be experience <laughs> let's not fudge -uh. this -uh. is it, no i'm gonna still say it's intermediate and you know crazy. why you are, you are crazy no, She's you're crazy, crazy. no you're, no here's why pick and choose the blocks you do in those red rows it's that's where the difficulty level lies and how much you actual actual work you want to do in those uh -uh. red rows. Lisa, uh -uh. Uh -uh. Lisa, look no. at that blue three inch 15 no. three inch don't call whatever. customer service and say if they do i'll tell them i'll send them to your house we this really are they're, they're welcome to come here we really wanted to do this one as a quilt along yes Ma selfishly because as an excuse for me to make it but then i'm like oh my gosh I, <laughs> I think everybody would be yelling at us like crazy so but we could always do um we're doing the piece and we're doing the blueprint and the piece and quilt we could do this one in 2025. Okay, sounds good to me and uh, uh, this one's her. called we'll black this one's called land that i love it's 68 by 85 that eighth friendly and then the back is a minnick and simpson i think it's a 108 yeah print. yeah we have it as yes. a 108 yeah yes and susan pieced it okay let's talk about the um oh no it's not this quilt let's go back i wanted to talk about one other thing that susan does sorry, that i didn't... really like is oh. sorry okay is Sometimes, lately I've been using a lot of light uh, binding, and I used to do like, you know, a light border and then a, like a blue or a red binding to pull in from the, from the inside. But then it's right. like, if, you, if you're not a perfectly straight, you can really <laughs> see the bump. And I noticed it because it's on film. We're on video, oh, wow. so yeah. so with the cream, I can get away with y'all not seeing if I have a mistake. Well, you know what? That's a good, that's a lot of times, I try to use self binding. I like the same color. If I'm doing a border, okay. I like to use the same color as the border, unless like that one has a different tiny little print to it. Okay, once again, that's blueprint for Valentine's. Right. So so see how there's the nine patches that were in that other quilt but then have the little small three inch blocks added as sprinkling and then where we had used some signature fabrics as our big nine inch ones there's hearts then additional border is added so um valentine's weddings what else susan all kinds of events for this particular one oh absolutely that's just that just says love all the way around <laughs> And that would actually, because the hearts are so much fun to make, and you don't get that much of an opportunity to make all the hearts mm -hmm. year round. So when you get started, like I did that a heart today for um, a year, and I co started collecting hearts, and I didn't realize how many hearts you actually can make because they're fun. 
This one is called Mia Moore. It's 60 by 69. Susan pieced it. It's fat quarter friendly. And I would say this is, you could definitely do this if you're a beginner. And if sure, because you, you know how to make a heart. Yeah, and if you, you know, wanted to do maybe the bigger hearts, you could always just put a fabric here and not do as many little hearts if you wanted to. Um, this fabric is definitely all scrappy, right, Susan? Yes, it's all scrappy. And there's some old scraps in there, too. There's some yeah. Seaside Rose and Paris Flea Market. Yeah, we went way back on that Yeah, one. like this is the super old Minnick and Simpson. I just Thank had a rule. I, did, I didn't want greens. I just wanted it had to be reds, pinks, or, you know, light pinks. And I didn't want, like, it, the greens to show up in that. That's mm -hmm. why there's so many. So for, for And once again, the main reason that there's not a solid border on that is I didn't have enough fabric to do a, a straight border without having to piece it. That's why I broke it up with hearts. I love, but you I don't necessarily have yeah. to make it. It makes it so yeah. different. So... It, if you were a beginner in making this, would you start with the big block first? Mm -hmm. Because kind of, that really yeah. is easier mm -hmm. versus sure. you would think, oh, I'm going to just do this little bitty guy. But little blocks are sometimes take as long as a big block. Yeah. And so you need some patience with that. But And I started using the seam align glue, like, I don't know, a year or two ago. And I never, I always thought, oh, that's stupid. That's just a waste right. of money. I don't, I don't need that. I, I don't need that. Yeah. I, I can save my money. I need it for fabric, right? And I started using it and I was like, oh my gosh, where has this product been my whole it's life? It's kind of like starching. I don't need starch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, it's kind of one of those, like you do it and then you can't go back. And, um, but I, I don't even, I love to make small stuff. So it's made it really easy because I can just like glue it on. And then if I'm leaving to go somewhere, I come back and I just, I know where I'm at and it's already glued down. I don't have to think about it. And it's it. all waterproof, right? I yeah. Mean, just... Well, I don't wash mine anyway. Well, I know, so but still, I know it's, it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This one's called Oh Baby Baby. Which way? Okay, and once again, that's picking some rows from Blueprint and sticking in little yeah. blocks. And Pinwheels, couldn't get it much easier. Yeah, so, yeah, it's 33 by 42. Susan pieced this. It has a piece backing also, fat quarter friendly. This one, I, what's experience level do you think? You're not, don't ask me, okay? Y'all have already decided I'm not the one oh to judge. Oh my gosh, we made you judge. <laughs> I would say beginner, intermediate. Yeah, I mean, this this, you could, this block right here might be tricky. Yeah, but you could put any other block No, it's in not it. because that's just a connector corner right there. That's, that's not tricky. Go slow. <laughs> I didn't make this block in any of my quilts. <laughs> um, and then this quilt, uh, I think the fabric, it just looks like a mix. I don't see one designer yes. in this. Well, we wanted a contemporary it, you know, it baby was quilt, a mix. right? Mm -hmm. a, a, I didn't a have a baby. Like baby. Right. I didn't have baby, baby colors, and I just picked, you know, because I wanted to use the gray. Oh, I love this one, Lisa. I Finally, I made something. Here's one of mine. <laughs> when we started this book, the plan was, uh, you know, we wanted it out of somewhat newer fabric collections and susan just kept saying i'm gonna do all these you do the samplers they're at the end and i'm thinking oh yeah they were at the end and at the end of the deadline also but uh <laughs> <laughs> it was it's super fun to do so like um allison dale one of the girls at moda is actually using this layout for her blockheads blocks because we have oh, six that's inch a great blocks. Idea. yeah six inch and 12 inch so she has the 12 inch here. There's a border of three inch all the way around and then two of each of the six inches around as well. So this is my version of a, a Christmas quilt. And it's 66 inches square. And what fabric collection is it? It's, it's pretty much all yeah. uh, Bonnie. Yeah, Bonnie I mean, I see, or I, yeah. I see one or two that's not, but mostly yeah. it's, a mix of and then we'll oh I think I have an old urban chick in yes. here I have that's the beauty of start with a bundle and then mm -hmm. add a few th other it's things beautiful. in so and we're going to talk about color and how they put together fabrics also in a little bit and I just wanted a very romantic vintage look so I, I picked a little tiny calico mm -hmm. and then my favorite is literally to use stripes, stripes. as my binding so this is a 
buy a stripe for that. Yeah, and I love the quilting. Can we show the quilting on this one? Because I like the border, how they, um, right here, I wanted to show this. The quilting in real life yeah, is amazing. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Oh, I don't know where my hand is, but I'm, yeah, right here. <laughs> yeah. This is amazing. Oh, isn't that awesome? I love the, because cool. it makes it look like the fabric has a stripe and it doesn't. Yeah. Angela McCorkle and how she fussy cut, you know, definitely did custom quilting and all over in the big blocks and then paid attention to detail in all the piece blocks. Yeah, I love the quilting. gorgeous and let me tell you the name of that last quilt peppermint rose 69 inches square this one's perspective it's I'm gonna check the size it is piece by Susan it uses fat eights so Susan you want to tell us about this one well, you know, actually that came about because we totally needed a spring quilt, which is nothing but spring colors. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to pay attention to the scale of the fabrics. I didn't mind if I used a large scale, a medium scale, or a small scale. I just was more about the colors. Oh, yeah. I so didn't even I noticed you know, that. Yeah. Because they're pretty yeah, much all so mediums, I, though, aren't they? Yeah, no, there's some larges in there. Okay. But I put, what I did was I, I pull, you know, when I do my colors, I make sure that my piles are pretty much even across the board so that I know that it's going to sprinkle around pretty much evenly across the board. But I actually copied uh, an old quilt that I had taken a picture of, like on a real camera, not even a cell phone. It was done in browns and blues, and it, I think it was browns and blues. Yeah, it was I, just I didn't amazing. even notice that because I normally would have used a lot of small scale, but they really are medium and largest yeah. that's interesting yeah. because it's not gonna it's the colors you wanted to show up in this mm -hmm. one to me yeah but this one is also one you could actually do in a two color but it's just one block done in a positive way and a negative way yeah that's all it is i love squint, squinting at the block at the quilts too to then see the value mm -hmm. and how soft it yes. is in the middle and then the pop of blue that happens yes and then you can rotate the, the blocks to do, you know, if you could rotate the blocks and get totally different looks on. This one's Absolutely. about eight. Really. Like if you could do it on point. Oh, she, <laughs> I ha, okay. I have to but, put the brakes on the on point sometimes with her. She wants to do everything on point, And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. It's really you, hard. No, you know how much mileage you get out of a quilt on point? Come on. <laughs> oh my God. You can make the quilt much bigger, yes. faster. But yes. the, outside exactly. math, the outside math can be a little tricky. Yeah. And no, I uh, love, so this, this looks like size. a lot of fig tree fabrics, right? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Because that just, that screams um, spring to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. This next one, we're going to have a sew along. We're going to talk about in a little bit. This is my favorite. Now, Susan's in Florida. Does, is there really ever a spring when she says it screams spring to yeah. her? Isn't it always like? Yeah. Yes, when, when it's Home Depot puts out all the flowers, okay? Okay. Lisa? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this one's 72 by 91. Lisa pieced it, and this has a ton of scraps, a ton of collections, a ton of designers, a ton of colors. And I would say this is intermediate, but we're gonna do this as a sew along and we're gonna do it over a full year. So something like this, yeah, it looks hard, but if you just do a little bit each month, it's very achievable. Like Kimberly, that block that there is four, four. six inch blocks. I Rotated. Believe. Yeah, so like what she was talking about, the quilt we just saw, how Kimberly mentioned you can rotate it to get a different design. Yeah. So that's what I did and still made a smaller block. And then same with this particular block. I needed to be, a, you know, a mishmash of a sampler. I needed some bigger blocks. So this particular square is one of the blocks, but by recoloring it and putting four together, I was able to get a great big block. It's beautiful. That's going to be a fun quilt along. Yeah, we're going to show you pictures of uh, what Sarah put together. Then we're Is it the bottom row? Oh, okay. Oh, where, where, where are you? Right here. There? Yeah. Okay. There we go. That block on the, I guess it's my right hand side, the little green star one. 
That one makes me a little nervous with all of the... This one? Did you press a, those seams all open? Oh, that's easy. <laughs> yeah, it's easy. Just get some triangle paper. It's fine. No, uh, but when you put it together... It's a six-inch block and then three-inch blocks yeah. around it. Yeah. So... Okay. And then the back is a... Uh, it's a 108 by Camille. I don't know if it's still available or not. And uh, this one, okay, people are asking about foundation paper. Now, Denise put together a set of foundation paper. It's called Peace and Quilt Sampler Foundation Paper, and that should have all the Which foundation. Which is incredible. Yeah. But, I know. That was great, wasn't it? But if you already have all the paper, you don't have to buy that. Like somebody like me, I already have the paper. I don't need to buy it. But if you're dabbling and really with a quilt like this, you kind of need to use foundation paper just for your sanity. And especially all those half square triangles here, like you're gonna get this perfect look by using the paper and you're gonna be glad you use the paper. Did you see how I used light borders on both of my quilts? Yeah, I know. It's because of y'all's influence. Aww. I love that quilt. That is gonna be a fun quilt to long because I love the colors. Okay, here's your on point quilt. <laughs> yes. Okay, you know why you got that, don't you? That's the, the, one of the reasons it got added to the book is because I literally made every single quilt block in the book in a six inch size. And I wanted, actually I made two and only one got taken for the book, but you had two there. Because I used all of them, I, so it went half and half. But that was just playing with the blocks. I just like a, a six inch size on point to me is amazing. Because what that makes it like eight and a half or something across. Eight and a half, yeah. yeah. Eight and a half. It's a per to me, it's a perfect size because that's a great size quilt block. And it's called Pointed Parade Table Topper. It's 46 inches square. This is all scraps. It's all scrappy. I love the how the blocks really pop outside of this Bella solid. I do too. But I will tell you this. In the book, there's a little hint for making so every one of those rows line up exactly and there's no cornerstones. You see that? Yeah. There's a little hint on doing that in the book, mm -hmm. how you do that with sashing. Because that can be problematic. So you'll always be straight. Yeah. And it's called... No, the, it would be. The foundation paper is just called... I thought it was called Peace and... Peace and Quilt Sampler, sampler. Foundation Paper. And, and it then, com comes in a whole box yeah. labeled that way, and so you can store all your papers in there also. And this one, the you'll notice the binding... Sometimes when you do the binding and it's just the same as the border, you just, it makes your eye, when you do that, it makes your eye go inside the quilt because this is just very, it's like a stop. I don't know if you've ever heard of I call of it ending the story. Yeah. I call it ending the story. Okay. Oh, oh. When I put a self binding See, on. See, with, with that kind oh. of stuff, I love like going to a quilt show and watching the people look at the quilts. Oh, yeah. And there's always uh, there's always quilts that people just walk right past. And not that they're not dynamite, but then right. there's always ones that you can tell yeah. whatever they did on the border sends their right. eye back in. So they're, they don't even know it subconsciously. Right. They're still studying the quilt. Yeah. Here's that paper. So that's what I mean. It's like if you already have Whoa. the paper like me, you wouldn't need to buy this. But it just it makes it easy. It makes a great Christmas gift yes, if somebody wants to buy it for you. Yeah, I keep seeing on Reddit, people are like, I need to buy a gift for a quilter. What should I buy? And I'm like, oh, I could give you 50,000 <laughs> answers on that. Just give me your credit card. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween. We just oh. have finished Halloween. And the, I know. Uh, one of the interesting things uh, Mark Dunn, the owner of Moda Fabrics, said to me one time was, more money is spent at Halloween than Christmas. And I was like, you know, again, I'm a natural blonde, so I have to process sometimes. And uh, then I really, really, I got to thinking about it. You buy new stuff every year for Halloween. You pretty much have your Christmas decorations. And if you were on anywhere on social media this past couple of months, you definitely saw how much money is spent on Halloween. So we knew we had to have a Halloween quilt in the book. Absolutely. I love orange and black and grays. I absolutely adore them. That was fun to make because this is where, it, once again, it's your personal choice. I wanted to repeat certain blocks just because I liked making them, but it was a matter of how to put them together and keep it without having to do lots of sashing and all of that. 
And so basically you could keep it as simple as you wanted on that. Yeah, and, and, if, and it's that called Tessellate. It's 56 inches square. And if you notice, Susan picked star blocks. So it gives it a star effect. Of course, you could go in and pick quilts that are maybe you know, just a different design. It doesn't have to be star blocks. And this one is fat quarter friendly. It looks like most of the fabric. But I also victory, put, the, yes, but, they are because thick tree not. grays only match. Your, yeah. Um, but I also put three inch um, center blocks in all of them, the blocks. Yeah. So oh, you don't have right. to do that. But either. she's afraid of so my funny. block, my one block. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so here the three inch blocks are set within the nine inch block. So instead of putting a square here. But right. Yeah. So that's where, once again, a block book, that's, you get to play with what is your comfort level? If that's not your comfort level, make it your comfort level. Don't do a three inch block. Or if your three inch block is a little off in measurements, add more fabric and turn it into a six, six inch block. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Remember, my first teacher said, give it away if there's a mistake. <laughs> Now, if you're a cowboy fan or a Longhorn fan or whatever, you can ignore what Susan's probably about to say, but go ahead, Susan. Okay, I'm not a team kind of person. I like team colors, okay? <laughs> Miami Dolphins just does it for me. And it's not that I'm from Florida. It's not that I follow the Dolphins. Who doesn't love orange and aqua? I mean, come on, it's beautiful together. But th this was so our, that's our quilt that was definitely inspired by sports teams and uh again the same thing graduation quilts just again fun i did keep all of the stars pretty much on the same value i didn't want too busy i didn't want it to speak really loud and mm -hmm. i think it no matter who makes the quilt and whatever colors you make it in i think that if you concentrate on that the stars are going to pop out you know because that'd be a great looking christmas quilt yeah with the stars all in red and then the green where the orange is. It'd be beautiful. And Su Susan and I are both known. I mean, I know that uh, Kimberly does it, Lori Holt. There's a lot of people that were doing scrap quilts. Scrap quilts don't mean everything but the kitchen sink. Yep. So it means I need aqua and I want 30 of them. Right. And so that's kind of what the, uh, and that's also a very, very important key to color success is it's okay if one maybe doesn't match, or mm -hmm. I think I've said before, you know, they can't all be the prom queen and stand out. So um. let's show the quilting on this one. This one's called Winning Team and it's 66 inches square. Susan pieced it and it, she used fat eights. And you can- Oh, that looks cool on the back, right? Yeah. yeah. And then let's see the quilt. You can kind of see the quilting on the front. I love how the quilting is so curvy compared to how yeah. straight those stars are. Okay, so I got a little carried away. A little. And started making three inch blocks. <laughs> but, um, I, okay, what I did was I sent these over to my long arm quilter, Sue, and she, she actually turned them all into pin keeps for me. So, if you're making your own pin keeps, I'm going to give you a little hint. Add a little border around the entire three inch block so you have room to cut and shape different shapes. So she wasn't, she wasn't just stuck to a three inch shape. I like that's a three inch block on the inside and I put her a little yellow border on the outside. And so I she was able to make something a, else. A cube. Yeah. Isn't that fun? And here's the other hint is we use that, uh, the crushed walnuts, but I also buy the um, um, lavender. So if you smell them, you'll smell the lavender in Ooh. there too. So it's, it's like a three to one ratio. And she, she has a, hum oh, I didn't realize how it? much that she had. Yes, um, you can buy it in bulk. And so it's like a three to one ratio, I think, it's, uh, you know, just about. So she keeps it in this big humongous, container in her sewing closet. I didn't realize how big the container was. We'll be making pin keeps for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> now this next thing I love, I just have such an appreciation because I do not cross stitch. My I'm going to show it sideways just so you can really see it up close. 
Okay, so Lisa had to have a matching cross stitch. Okay, so it's not an exact match to her quilt, but it's as close as I could like shove in the little blocks because you know, of course it's cross stitch. She had to have something that was scrappy and cross stitch. So you can download this celebration sampler cross stitch for free at Fat Quarter Shop. It's not in the book, but it's a companion to the book and we're giving it to you free. And we don't have thread packs, but we do list for you the R floss colors that Susan used and we list the fabric she used. And uh, she did put glass. That's the question we always get, but there is glass on the frame. That's what non glare. Non glare. Non -glare. Yeah. Yes. And it's 138 stitches by 172 stitches. So on 14 count, no, 32 count, it comes out to like eight and three quarters by 10 and three quarters. All the information's on the page. And she used R floss. So that's what we listed. We just listed exactly how Susan made it. Okay, so let's look at questions real quick and see kind of what we have missed. Are the stripes in between the stars piece? No, it was a stripe piece of fabric. Mm -hmm. How adjustable are the borders? Loving the one on winning team, but I might make larger quilts and would want to add that style to a larger sized quilt. It, absolutely, I, uh, just whatever, whatever yeah. the width is. Mm -hmm. I mean, you'll have to obviously adjust in what your length is, but always you can make things bigger mm -hmm. by adding. Will there be tutorials for piece and quilt? I haven't planned any, but... Yeah, that's the quilt along. I know, but they okay. want to know if I'm going to do a video oh, oh, okay, every okay, time. Okay. I don't think so, but okay. I'll definitely give tips. I mean, we could always have one tutorial. I think that one's kind of self-explanatory because the blocks are in the book, and I mean... The right. blocks are laid out. It's not like you're doing something brand new. Yeah. Nancy says, do Lisa and Susan ever use white for background or only off whites? That's a great question. Well, uh, again, working with Susan instead, you know, it, it's like your own cooking. I like Susan's cooking or quilting better than mine. So I sit there and I study hers. And then we were at a retreat together and I was studying Kimberly's. And I definitely have gone more towards the ease and simplicity and just the beauty of considering all the same background mm -hmm. so very, very much so i'll be i'll be doing more of that so what but is your I favorite like a, a, background like if your favorite bella or do you you know talk a little bit about the the fabrics you use i use the bella solid is it 200 the, that's what i use the, yeah Okay, well, and, but here, here's, here's the thing about my back, background. If I want the block to really just pop and talk to be the block, and I want you to see that block, then I'm going to use a solid background. I'm not going to do a scrappy background because I don't need that, that little piece of a flower in a corner where it looks like you missed a point. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So, so if I want the block to pop, I'm going to use a solid. I used to use Bella Solid 60 all the time, and then suddenly everybody's collection started getting brighter and brighter. Yeah. And that, that is it that if it's that 200 it's that too, I use yeah. it, I buy the yeah. by the bolt. Where, where they're um, 99, it matches or like everything. They're both probably our top yeah. sellers. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually like, uh, especially if I'm doing it with prints. There's a silky version. Yes, it so, has an S on the skew. Yeah, so it it, uh -oh. it goes through the same finishing process that prints do. So it has that same feel as a printed fabric would. So I like combining that versus the a solid. If I'm doing it in an all solid quilt, mm -hmm. then I'd use. Hey, Lisa, can solid. you send me some? <laughs> yeah, got it. <laughs> and the, um, okay. how often do you use the background from a collection versus the Bella Solid? You mean the solid background that they give you in the collection? Yeah, like if there's a, there, if like there's a Camille white on white dot, or you're talking to the you're talking to the wrong person, Kimberly. Remember, I'm the one that breaks open the bundle, so I don't know what fabrics actually belong in the bundle by the time I'm finished. That's true. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. think again for the same reason, I don't know why I don't necessarily like the texture of a Bella with the prints, but I would lean towards the print or the the solid in a group mm -hmm. you know, yeah hands down and the we have been buying a lot more of the backgrounds from the groups 
like a lot more and we've already run out of the background yeah, it's for always the best seller, yeah. and Kevin and I are just shocked because <laughs> uh, we bought so much that I'm sure I don't know where it all went y'all do you know what I will say this my new favorite thing and I, it's never been my favorite and I'm just now coming to love it is the tone on tone whites I used to never like working with those oh, I, I love for those. some reason it just I never did and for some reason right now I can't get enough of them I think there's so many pretty ones out there and it gives a texture to a quilt without screaming any kind of anything in a color or a print or anything. I do yeah. like that now. Now well, I'm collecting them. I, I consider those milk and bread. It's so easy for us to go into a fabric store and pick out all the beautiful fabrics mm -hmm. and all the you know, big florals. And I love blue, so I'm gonna buy every blue. And then you go home and you're like, oh, I needed milk and bread and I forgot milk and bread again. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where I got going on the low volume scrappiness is if I saw good background prints, I'd buy them mm -hmm. and just stop, stopped up on those. So yeah, exactly. I love Joanna's new linen covered. Yeah. Uh, it's like a low vol. It's called linen covered, right? It just came out. I love it. And I, um, we made a kit. What is the kit we did? I love it. Layer cake, Layer cake loop. And so yeah. like, I love just putting a bunch of of those together I like the way it looks and I feel like I have like a little stash of backgrounds now whereas I used to just I'll keep anything at this point like if I have this much of a background I will keep it so I can put it on a bitty brick house or anything so I'm just yeah. like obsessed with keeping the backgrounds now where I used to just be like yeah whatever but now it just seems like backgrounds are used a lot more than 20 years ago I exactly. Like also well, that it makes the, it look more vintage. You don't really know. Yeah. I mean, all quilt the quilts will be here way past our lifetime, mm -hmm. and I'm uh, Miss, Mr. Dunn collects quilts. Mm -hmm. you know, the president of Moda, and so to document those and know the history and the story behind them. Uh, but I like my quilts to not necessarily know what year they came from. Mm -hmm. You know, because they may have you know, so many different fabrics or look more vintage than mm -hmm. they really were. Well, linen cupboard would be beautiful done in blueprint mm -hmm. too. It Add would. some more prints to that. It'd be really, a, it'd be so low volume that you, it would just be like that summer throw. Yes, it would. That's a good idea. Um, this is a great question that sometimes I think I used to struggle with more, but over time I think you get used to, but what factors in your decision to add a border on a quilt or not add a border? Well, that you know, that's that's a great one in the fact that how many of us are making that one quilt that has to fit perfect on our bed. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there's been a lot of conversation about why are all these quilts, you know, a lot of us make square quilts. And somebody brought up now with like the California King and all uh -huh. these different sizes of mattresses, a lot of the quilts, mattresses are square so um, you know that's that's the one thing really with trying to make that decision on what your border is going to be is where are you going to end up using mm -hmm. the end quilt and does it just need that little bit of finishing to end it mm -hmm. okay so. you, my real answer is did I buy enough fabric for the border <laughs> so I don't have to piece it <laughs> the one thing that I I think if you think about 20 years ago, I swear every quilt I made had a six and a half inch border. Six and a half to six eight inches. Yep. Yeah, that's six and it. a half to that's eight and a half, the, and that, that was it. And that now it's like, the mattress. Yeah. I, and like for years, Jocelyn does these skinny borders and it would drive me crazy. And I'd be like, Jocelyn, just do a bigger border. She's like, it doesn't look good. And so now it's so popular. And I think like Jocelyn's gotta be a part of it. Like these skinnier borders, like, so like 20 years ago you would have never seen that and you would have seen a red border with a brown binding 20 years ago you don't see that now yeah. and, and you so needed it to be the drop of the mattress so anywhere yeah. from a couple little borders to mm -hmm. then that so you needed like 10 inches because it was gonna mm -hmm. perfectly hang off the yeah. side of your bed yeah and yeah. i do feel like people used to just make quilts for beds now they're just making them for everything just like this book shows for gifts for for more things than they used to, I think. Yeah. And well, you can throw it Absolutely. on the end of your bed, but mm -hmm. a lot of us have some mm -hmm. other sort of cover mm -hmm. yeah. to that, so. 
Yeah, my dog has a little quilt that he sits on every night. And Colleen Holt made it. Thank you to Stitching with Sisterly's Colleen Holt. He sits right on it. He knows exactly where his little bed is. It's got little pug faces on it. And I'm like, I don't know if my dog's smart enough to know, but he has his own quilt. <laughs> oh, man, you're really showing us up now. I got to get, get on the dog quilt. Yeah. List for Christmas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we could have had that, Lisa. She would have let us have more pages. <laughs> more pages. Um, how do you get your quilt so soft? Do you put something special in the water? No. No. I, I, when I wash my quilts, you mean? Yeah. No. When I wash my quilts, just for that very first wash, I literally put it in the spin cycle with fabric softener, and then I put it in the dryer. I don't run a complete you know cycle of wash i just do it to get all the stay out of the fabric and yeah. soften up the uh, i don't even bed. know what spin cycle is so what spin cycle <laughs> on on your on your washing machine it'll have like regular normal wash hard, heavy wash and all that i have spin just what uh, does it do you know uh, rinse it's a rinse and spin oh and you can add fabric softener to that it's just a rinse and spin okay and then uh, do you put it in the dryer too uh well it really depends i like you don't I mean, like, obviously my quilts weren't washed yet. Okay. Um, I do, you know, the ones we use all the time. Uh, a lot has to do with your batting and also your the quilting and the thread. Mm -hmm. uh, it really is amazing. Some of my kids' favorite quilt is one that's like a hand-quilted quilt. So, again, it's amazing the difference of two layers of thread, the machine mm -hmm. quilting on the top and the bottom and how that changes compared to hand quilting that just has the one mm -hmm. thing of thread going through. Um, I like to use bamboo batting. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So batting does play, have a play in it. Uh, one whole year I did kind of an experiment with, I used a different batting each time. Uh, I live in Texas, so one of my favorites is to use a flannel inside. So it's still real dense. Yeah and you know and covers your body it's kind of like a, a weighted blankie mm -hmm. kind of thing mm -hmm. uh and then i also like to play with what my quilt backs are that can make it soft like i love wovens on the back mm -hmm. and uh different textures that are really the part that's up against your skin susan what batting do you put in your quilts whatever sue likes to put in my quilts when she long arm quilts for me so you have no idea basically <laughs> no she she'll tell me oh, um she will. i personally yes i personally love it when she uses the bamboo but she also uses a wool that is just as soft as oh, the bamboo oh, yeah the so you know yeah so she picks the batting based on the design pretty much okay. and or she'll pick it she'll say you know what this will decide if it looks like a heavier quilt or not but she also chooses because she knows that i wash my quilts so that's how it's determined okay. that's why you're not going to see like she doesn't custom quilt a lot of my stuff because you're not going to see it in the end and i do yeah. so many things that you know i don't do a lot of samplers that require custom quilting uh -huh. that you're going to notice they're not going to hang on the wall that literally you're going to wrap up when you have the flu you know what I i'm saying what, that's one of my favorite trends is getting away from everything having to be custom quilted. I haven't had something custom quilted in years. I just put pantographs yeah. on everything now. And if you go back 20 years ago, I would have never done that. I would have been like, oh my God, that is so ugly. It's gotta be custom quilted. But I know But I think there's so many yeah. there's so many designs that are so pretty and they yeah. wash so gorgeous. Well, and but no, Sue will decide what it can needs. Scale it up. I uh -huh. mean just with those mm -hmm. machines and the software and the designs and everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's, it really right. is amazing. So, yeah, and like like you said, like there's so many because basically the I don't know if you guys know, but like the long armors, they'll buy the pantograph from a from a software company, and uh, then they own that pantograph and they can use it. But you know, there used to be probably ten like loops and swirls and clamshell. That, that big rose, yeah, that big, huge gaudy yeah. rose. <laughs> yeah, but now I actually like, love so that many. one. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I'll make something and send it to you. <laughs> okay, somebody wants to know if y'all are sisters. We you are know not. what, people will, no, we're not, but we get uh, on our Instagram, uh, like when we post pictures, y'all look like sisters. <laughs> so how many years have y'all known each other and how did y'all meet? You want me to tell that story? We've known of each other for a gazillion years, but actually physically known each other, probably I think it was it was uh, quilt con in Savannah that I actually met her for the very first time. Well, the uh, I'm going to go back further. 
So you go uh, way back. <laughs> a, a gal that used to help us write patterns uh, worked it through the old green cupboard, I believe, and didn't uh -huh. work at the old green cupboard in Jacksonville. Yes. And she she would keep saying, "Oh, you need to get uh, Aki to sew samples, man. She is so fast." She goes home the next night, and the uh, oh, yeah. next day she brings in the quilt sample. Fast. So I'd heard about her forever. Aki, 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 Aki. And so then when I finally, I think, met her online, her last name is spelled A-C-H-E. Yeah. Ache. Yeah. I never knew she was Aki. And then when we, when we first started talking, then I'm like, oh my gosh, you're, you're Aki. <laughs> Okay, but I could even back it up even further. When I worked at the quilt st shop, everybody knew Lisa Alexander yeah. from oh, Mocha. Oh, and you say enough. it. Stop you, it. Stop you say it, it just like supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. You know, enough. it's like one word. She doesn't have. Let's get so back to I've some questions. So I've known about her that long. <laughs> you know, when she when we first started, like I got an um, it was a notification. I think in my Pinterest, please contact me, and I thought. That, that's weird. And so, and then I got another one. It was just kind of really strange. So I did, I emailed her. That's when you did your blog all the time and everything. Yeah. I think I emailed her or through her blog, or I made a comment or something. I think somebody's hacked your computer <laughs> and, and they didn't. She really did want to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> so the very first phone call, she goes, can, can I give you a call? And I said, yes. And we set up the time as a Saturday morning. I put on full on makeup and got fully dressed like we were going to do an actual sit down conversation. That Who was does way that? Before it was, Zoom I was or anything. Yeah. I was talking to Lisa Alexander from Moda. That was like, I was so nervous. The sweat was pouring down. I was like crazy. I still, I still get butterflies when I'll, I'll get it's, uh, I'll, it's Lisa on the phone. I'll put, Ugh. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> How do you decide what motif to put on your quilts? And you just let your quilter decide, right? Absolutely. She sees something I never see. Yeah. What do you do? I mean, you know, it, it, that's the most important part of the quilt. Yeah. I mean, it can ruin it oh. or make it. Yeah. And so that's really tough. You got to work with somebody you that gets you mm -hmm. and knows. Uh, one of my favorite things that Maggie Honeyman, that uh, so Maggie is, it quilts a lot of my quilts. And if I, I'm like, well, I kind of want this. She'll take, you know, the press and seal that you get at the grocery store that's like oh, the sewing yeah. wrap. She'll pull off a roll of it, you know, cut it, and then truly draw, take, you know, and press it on the quilt and then send it to me. And it's like, is this your vision? I'm like, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, um, but then, like, I didn't. I don't think I had an input on any of those quilts. I knew she would just. I had confidence in her that she would do better than I ever even could have dreamed. Mm -hmm. So. And that's uh, the biggest part. You need to be comfortable with who is doing your long arm quilting. Yeah. Period. It doesn't matter if it's if you're brand new, never met them before. If you feel comfortable with them, you know you're going to get. Some early on, I results. had I had two quilt tops. One was like a red, white, and blue, and one was teal and purple and, you know, whatever. So somebody gave me, oh, this is a great long armor. She's really inexpensive. So I sent two quilts off. I mean, I was, I didn't have a pot to pee in, you know, as far as spending money on uh, long arming. Well, she put the purple quilt fabric on the back of the red, white, and blue one oh. and the tan on the back of the other one. Now. Oh, I, yeah. I didn't, you know, so basically, basically they were somewhat ruined and I didn't have the heart to like send it back and I mean, it was so cheap anyhow, but you know, like I said, it can ruin the quilt. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's a very, very important part of the whole process. They are magicians. Yeah. And one thing it's that we can hear, I have to give a shout out to Teresa and Nova is I am super particular about any pantograph that goes on any quilt that's in any video. I mean, I am very picky. I will just straight up admit it. Like there's certain pantographs, they're just a no. Like I, they know I'm not gonna like it, but every now and then I have this one employee, Elva, she's wild. She likes wild things. And so sometimes she'll email and she'll be like, Kimberly, can I just please on this one quilt, can I just do this? I know it's funky. I know you don't like it. Can I do it? And I'm like, okay one time this year. But you'll notice when you see the quilts, they have a look. Didn't it make you look at it differently? Yeah, it oh, makes yeah. you look That's, at, and yeah. so Teresa will email me and she gives me um, four or five pantographs to pick from. 
And then I always pick the same ones. Like, I don't like any panda graph that has leaves in it. It drives me crazy. Who knows where that came from? I, I, just I, had, that I had the year of the Baptist fan. Like, I yes. look at my quilts, I'm like, every single quilt I yes. made that year had Baptist fan quilting on it. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's really funny when Sue does my quilting, though, she'll say, I'll say, oh, that's a gorgeous quilt. She goes, I've used that before. I don't, I notice it as it's brand spanking new, and she knows exactly what she's used it on in the past, and it looks nothing like mm -hmm. the, what she's just done. Another thing to think about is thread color. If you go back oh, yeah. 20 years ago, I swear every quilt had a multi variegated thread Never. on the front. Mm -mm. But that was so popular 20 years ago. Oh. I cannot stand for any, there's a quilt that came out recently and it was quilted in a really bad color and it's dry, it's gonna drive me crazy all next year because I have to look at it every time. But I can't stand a thread color on a quilt. I can't stand it. Can I tell you one more yes. horror story? So it's right before Quilt Market. It was a three sisters quilt. It was like an ocean waves. I had okay. made it. It was just like precision yes. triangles, yes. right? Yes, I remember that quilt. We, yes, so we sent it off to um, a gal that was going to a long arm convention that weekend or whatever. I mean, this is big name long armers. So I don't know whether they coached each other or whatever or thought that the quilting was more important than the quilt because there, that is the case right. sometimes. Well, it came back in bright red oh. quilting, huge roses in this alternate block. Oh my gosh. Page. And since then, that quilt has been called the whorehouse quilt. <laughs> <laughs> because, I mean, it was just like, oh my gosh. And it was definitely an example of a, a long armor that thought her art was more important than maybe the mm -hmm. quilt itself. So, yeah. yeah. And I think just like thread on the, like a navy thread or a black thread, it just, I feel like it just ruins the quilt. So, I mean, that's like a big no-no for me. Yeah. And so that, that brings up also, like when you're considering what you're gonna put on the back of the quilt, talk yeah. to your long armor. Because sometimes if you want a different color on the back than on the front. It'll pull through. It'll pull through. So that's exactly. another reason why sometimes you take in, you'll see like a lot of these quilts that were, had a lot of light, had a light background for that very reason mm -hmm. that you don't wanna have, uh, a dip, have to worry about thread popping through. Right, and I don't like, yeah, I don't, that's why I have a lot of light on my borders and my backing. I really just don't want to see the thread at all. Are there more questions? Okay. Okay, so I was going to show you Susan's bundle. So one thing that you guys always ask about is yep. how do Susan and Lisa come up with the fabric? So they both oh. put together bundles. This is Susan's bundle, Lisa's bundle is going to be available later in December, but this is like a starter bundle and we do that with each of their books. Um, they're called starter bundles. So there's like a Lisa's celebrate with quilt starter bundle, Susan's celebrate with quilt starter bundle, and they're just a starter to give you colors that go together if you're too scared to like go out on your own and pick your own fabrics. Like this one has oh, that, that great bundle was so much fun. <laughs> this yeah. this one has that great stripe y'all were asking about in the sports quilt, mm -hmm. maybe in a different colorway color. than what was in there. But it you know how, Susan's masterful at adding a bunch of the little geometrics. Mm -hmm. So a mini check, a plaid, a stripe. You know. Kind but of you know what the stuff. other you know what I'm more thrilled about in that bundle? I'm so excited about chrome that color that chrome color. That, not that yellowy, but that oh, more yeah. of a chrome yellow. No, uh, the, underneath you, Lisa, sitting right. on your, oh, this, no, the, underneath. This one, this one. That, yes, that chrome, right? That last one oh, that where oh. you, it leans towards the yellows. That's such a huge color this year. You're seeing it with everything. Mm -hmm. I so wanted like, to find I a way it, to mix that in. I call it baby poop you, green. Is that what you're calling chrome? Really? I'm calling it more chrome. <laughs> I, whatever, whatever color you want to call it. That's so huge right now. Yeah, yeah, and everybody's is. putting it with all so many different colors. I had to find a way to stick it in with my color palette, which y'all normally know me for. Y'all mm -hmm. never see me work with that kind oh, of color. And I wanted huh? to to slide that in and it came out so cool with that bundle. I'm so thrilled with it. So I wanted to give a huge thank you to Lisa and Susan for letting It's So Emma publish their oh, wow. book. We're so honored. What a gr great experience, my goodness. 
And then huge shout out, anybody who knows It's So Emma, we could not do it without Sarah Price. She does all the books, she does the photography, she does every single thing from start to finish. I could not do this publishing company without Sarah. Also huge thank you to Jocelyn, who is also our editorial director. And then this time for our proofreaders, because we always have a ton of proofreaders, Nova, Cheryl, Karen, Peach, and then our quilters for this book were Angela McCorkle of Quilts with a Heart and Susan Rogers. And then for um, filming and photography, we have Brittany, Sophie, and Tori that we want to thank. Yeah. How fun oh. is that? Because my team, uh, it was let me tell you, y'all y'all just see me? This is not the the this whole company could not be done without all the people behind me that do everything behind the scenes, including Jordan, Denise, Sophie, Ashley's answering your questions. Kevin's probably driving my kids around somewhere. <laughs> uh, uh, I, they, they actually had the photo shoot in Dallas. Yes. And I got to go and it was amazing how yeah. that just all goes yeah. together. So, um, And there's a lot that goes into it. Like the one thing that I'm so proud of, I mean, I'm proud of a lot of things I'm not trying to sound arrogant, but like, I'm a proud of a lot of things. But one thing I'm really proud of is when you get a book that's by It's So Emma, you don't get a plain white sheet anywhere in that book. You don't get a quilt that's like three by four and 12 blocks and that's your book. There's a lot of thought that goes in. When we get a book proposal, it's like, okay, we're not gonna just accept, like a lot of companies will just accept whatever comes in. It's like, okay, wait, we gotta have you gotta have a mission for the book. You have to have a direction for the book. You have to have a look for the book. Like we put a lot of time into it and I don't think anybody is ever gonna be able to recreate what we do because of my team. Oh yeah, it's it's such a competitive space. Yeah. And a very fast space anyhow. Mm -hmm. So yeah, for you to be able to, I mean, it's a miracle to create. I mean, I was gonna say, when we even start on this, mm -hmm. you know, and to be able to turn around and you kept saying October and I'm like, like of 2024 yeah you know so yeah it's amazing yeah yeah so we're going to talk about the quilt along so that um and we're still going to answer all of your questions but we wanted to talk about first the blue blueprint quilt along we'll show you the quilt again and lisa and susan are hosting this but i'm going to let them talk about it um i'm going to i'm going to grab the quilt though and maybe maybe grab the heart one also while yes. I'm doing that. Uh, so with the book having just come out at the end of October, uh, Susan and I couldn't wait until yours in March mm -hmm. to do it. Yeah. So uh, we wanted to do something very quick and still let you be able to make something in time for Christmas. Christmas. Uh, I literally am going to tackle two uh, sports quilts <laughs> uh, using this pattern for that. So. Uh, like Susan and I'm going to tackle one. Yeah, and I'm going to use. I'm, I'm, I am so excited about this. I met Kathy Holden the first time at Market this year, and I'm a little in love with this. This isn't out yet. Show, it's, um, show Susan on the screen real quick so she can show the fabric she's talking about. It's curated in color. Uh huh. Can you see it? Oh my gosh, this is the coolest set of prints. Mine is going to be so busy, so crazy yeah. with color and and prints, but I do have. For mine, I have already pulled some like minimal kind of stuff, little mm -hmm. prints, solids, and all that, mm -hmm. just to, to mix it up, to break it up some. But, but that's going to be mine. That's so good because that's out of your normal comfort zone. Mm -hmm. it, exactly, but I'm dying to use yeah. it. And that's really what, I, you know, Susan just kept on and on. We need a quilt that you want to be Easy. able to make over and over and over again. And then you'll also notice in the style of a lot of the fabrics that are coming out now tons of big signature prints yes and so you don't have to cut everything up small yeah so that's that's right. the same thing where this showcases that um i'm actually using this layout for my blockheads mm -hmm. because i i'm using all the little sections like right here or putting in blocks and and different things so whether you want something simple like this that you can still get done at christmas or whether you want to start something like this that you need as a gift mm -hmm. it's kind of the same whole concept but we're going to crank it out in like four dates uh it's all going to be on the moda uh blogs december 7th through the 10th and so we have it set up introduction and cutting 
Uh, then one segment of the sewing, second segment of the sewing, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, finish up and talk about backing and quilting and binding. So that's going to be a really fun one. But that also leaves it open for your own interpretation. If you want to take longer and add more piece oh, to yeah, lines, yeah, if you yeah, want to go yeah. through the book and add, you know, we're just going to, we're just slamming it out there just, just so we get you in the book to play yeah. just so we get you used to flipping those pages and knowing you're gonna we want all the pages bent and bookmarked and all of that kind of stuff that's what yeah that's what we're trying to get you into the book to do and once you know either you make it that way or you just added everything in there so that's going to be from december 7th to december 10th and then uh my team put together some other other ones just in case if you wanted to just buy a bundle that that's already These are put crazy together good. Um, this is Layla Boutique's Love Struck that just arrived this week. You only need 15 fat quarters, though. Why is it that every color option is like, I want to make that one, too? Yeah. Is that? Yeah. I know, right? And then we did Collection for a Cause, and that is by... That one is amazing. Etch, that's, it's called Etchings, and that is by Mark, Mark Dunn and Three Sisters. And then this one we colored is Speed Sacks Good Works by Lindsay McCray. That looks like anthropology. Mm -hmm. Like just the, It does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think that there's going to be a fabric collection that isn't going to look pretty in that. But I also see so many blocks that could be filled in with that, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. so, so that is going to be the blueprint quilt along. It's going to be December 7th through December 10th in 2023 is that the year we're in yeah. i don't even know <laughs> yeah. but the next one we're going to talk That's about enough. is going to be next year and it's going to be a much harder quilt but i love this collection and so i just had to do it in this collection um let's see are we going to show the we're going to let's show the quilt real quick in the computer sorry <laughs> So this is the quilt and Sarah colored this in using the Shoreline Collection by Camille, which you guys know I love. She added a couple of Bella solids in there. We're gonna show you the blocks all made up by um, Lisa had someone make all the blocks, but this is going to be a year long sew along. We'll host it at Fat Quarter Shop and you need a Fat Quarter bundle and a lot of yardage. So I'm gonna show you the blocks and we do have a kit. It's not you know what's pretty yet. about that quilt done in a collection? It looks totally different than the quilt you had done, Lisa. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can see it done in so many different ways. See, again, that I like that cooking better than my cooking, right? Okay, so uh, exact. Uh, Siri Green made these blocks for me. Uh, I think I'm still going to make a version out of a Minikin Simpson collection, but I felt, again, I fell in love with the collection that uh, Fat Quarter Shop was doing. So now you can see the breakdown of the blocks outside of the sampler, where the sampler looks a lot of work, but once you take it down and break it down to every single individual block, it's very doable. So those, there's one, are those one set of 12 inch blocks, then all kinds of fun nine inch blocks. So like this particular one is pieced where we put four nine inch blocks together to make an 18 inch block. So you see those. This one is I the one I- think what's gonna help. <laughs> this is the one I showed you that is one, one of the blocks, but by the way you color it and put it all together is another big block. So see how fun that is? You know, the individual block itself has like a dark and a dark there. So really it's just all about learning and seeing different things. So the same with these are all put together to create a bigger block. And this is a wonderful white on white dot by Camille, I love it. I I'm gonna buy a bolt of it when it comes in. But I love that it's, it's Well, like I will tiny. tell you this, Kim Kimberly, with you having this being offered as the kit, it's gonna, um, if you're not comfortable making a sampler just on your own with your own fabrics, this is gonna give you a lot of confidence because there's enough color oh, variation to do your own little thing. Right. 
and we'll show the blocks on a uh, Friday live streams at least once a month we'll have up close photos on our blog we have a kit we have that paper pad it does have four Bella solids in it all the background the outer border the binding and then there is a backing set um, separate and there's more there's more I know you wouldn't believe it but there's more so here's all the uh, an assortment of the six inch ones like I love that one with the green uh, mm. and that beautiful same block different background different colors with it again this is another one that we put several of them together mm -hmm. to create a different layout let's see yep Am I doing that right? Yeah. I don't even know if that's the one that's no. in the quilt, but it's a pretty cool layout. <laughs> and look at that one. I love that with the stripe in it. Saw Two Star is probably one of my all-time favorite blocks. Yeah, I love those blocks. And this is the Shoreline Collection by Camille. It's coming out in March next year. And there's like five or six Bella solids, right? Uh -huh. This is, oh, yeah, sorry, this is okay. one of the Bellas. So again, I think just on and on for saw two stars and then the cutest little three inch star blocks. But look, I mean, it's only what, nine pieces. I mean, it's not too terribly bad, but definitely uh, triangle papers. Yeah, so this is lots of the very same one. And these are all made in shoreline. So Lisa had it made where it matches what Sarah colored and we knew uh, Sarah colored it. Yeah. So that's how we... Um, and then just triangles for borders. Good mindless, repetitive sewing. Uh, you can pay your kids to tear apart the papers oh, if you yes. need to. But yes. uh, yeah. So you'll see that start to come alive in March, mm -hmm. right? That's beautiful in the shoreline. It's gorgeous. I love your version too, Lisa. I just can't get over how different they look. I know, isn't that cool? Yeah. It's amazing how, I mean, that's where it's going to be anything goes on this, whenever you choose. I love it in Shoreline, though. It's a very, very fresh feel. Mm -hmm. And not to have to think. Yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah, right? And we try, right? To, yeah, we try to make it easy because Sarah really, she's really good at color because she's doing books yeah, she all the time. And so she knows how to do color placement. She, she's a quilter, so she knows about, you know, she doesn't just slap something together. Um, she puts it together, she, she moves stuff around, and then we work as a team collaboratively. So we might say, oh, that sticks out, move this around. So we've kind of already done the thinking for you, um, but of course you could join and sew along with your own fabric from your stash. You don't have to buy the kit or anything. Yeah, because we do love to see what they do. Yes, so. yes. And tell them how they can find you guys on um, Instagram. Uh, you know I work for Moda. Mm -hmm. So my uh, Instagram is Moda Lisa, but it's spelled with two S's. So mm -hmm. M-O-D-A-L-I-S-S-A. -S -S and I am Yard G-R-L-6-0. There we go. There you go. It's on the screen. Yeah. Uh -uh. So you can follow along with them. And of course, Fat Quarter Shop uh, for Blueprint and the Piece and Quilt. We're gonna do some questions that came in beforehand, and then we're gonna do some questions that are coming in right now. We kind of talked about this, but Sarah went back this morning. We asked her to see when was the first time that y'all came to us with this book. Oh, okay. And she said October oh. 2022. What? Oh my god. Really? So we did this book. That went fast. Like, yeah. Yeah. That's quicker than I thought. Wow. Are, are wow. We, are, it is. Yeah. It, it, it seems like it was longer than that. Yeah. I know. Thank yeah, you, I thought Sarah. it was going to be longer too. <laughs> are you working on another book together? Are we? Can we? Please? Okay, of course. <laughs> Susan probably already okay. has the quilts done. Don't tell her oh, I know. yet until I can catch up. <laughs> like, I think she can sew faster than she can design. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I didn't think anybody could sew faster than me. And then I met Lori Holt. And then I met Tammy Vanders. <laughs> Vanderschmidt at my work. Oh my yeah. gosh. I went to retreat with her and I was like, what did, like, 
I don't even know. Like, I she snuck. swims twice Look. as fast as me. And I sat, like, in between the oh. two of them, and I just felt like both of them were having a race on their presser foot. Like, I mean, I felt like I was, like, at an Indy car race. I'm like, whoa, who, you know, which one's yeah. going to beat who? Right. But, but were both fast. Yeah, but you know what? It's, it's not that I'm so fast. It's kind of like, you know, when you're driving, and, like, my husband always kids because I drive in the right-hand lane like if I'm driving to Maine. I don't leave that lane because I right-hand turn in Maine, okay? So I just chug along and just keep going and going and going. It's not that I'm speed demon. It's just I'm very consistent. Well, and you're so, you're so, your process in picking fabrics, there's such confidence and such a process. You know, like I love how you sew by color in the summer. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So that's because it's fun and it's mindless. Yeah. It's, it actually, it, it gives you a focus for sewing. Yeah. But I also, no matter what kind of quilt I'm putting together, if there's a lot of colors in it, I'm going to lay all the colors out to make sure I'm pretty much even across the board. So it's not going to, so it's going to be even throughout the quilt because I don't want it to have like 10 browns and two yellows. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I make sure before I even start cutting anything that I've already got pretty much even colors. And you have all your fabric. Didn't you say like you just take your bundles apart and you everything is sorted by yes. color? Absolutely. I could never do that. Absolutely. I have bins but that you have know, des designer names. Yeah, me too. No, you know why? Because you now, because you do that, you don't know how many designers really match so perfectly with other designers and the prints look so cool together. You you, to I would have never more. thought I about that. I have started that. to have more. Yeah. I started to No, more. once you pull them apart, and you're you're not looking at the print you're not thinking of the designer you're actually looking at the look of the mm -hmm. fabric and what it's going to match with yeah you're not paying attention to anything else if you can and plus i don't like touchy touchies and like a you know like a, a bundle hey you know, susan uh, after this i'm going to go over to kimberly's house while she's at work and undo all her bundles no <laughs> okay and okay. i am well i mean having it by, by designer is good because yeah. like a lot of times lately i've been doing all these scrappy quilts and you know like i'll use a collection 10 times to do a bitty bitty brick house oh my gosh denise you want to tell me scrappy strings. scrappy strings i just do all these blocks well then i always miscut it always so then i'm like okay what's the designer where is it go pool and like having yeah. it at least i can find it well, you, no, you know now you need to mix up your designers. Yeah. yeah. You need to you need to put everything by color. You're yeah. gonna be amazed at how many pretty blues match that you never thought that those designers match. Yeah. But the You're one be problem so is everybody that's watching wants, wants to buy to exactly what she did. Yeah. So she does have to pay attention yeah, to the, all that. The, the sad thing is I have this like shelf with different designers and then I have a cabinet. It's all Lori. A cabinet and Kevin's like, is that whole cabinet full of fabric? I'm like, don't look, don't look. Closing it up because he helped <laughs> he helped me organize because I everything had just gotten out of control. Because I'm I think because I'm sewing more scrappy, I'm keeping more things. I'm yeah, it's a it's a monster. Oh, yeah. I have so much stuff. Yeah, it's what it's, I thought would be fun to do. Like I want to invite my friends that are quilters to come to my house, bring your machine. You can bring no fabric, <gasps> and you just sew from my scraps. Just help me. Yeah. Use my, you know, and it'd be fun because you also maybe sew with stuff you're not used to. Yeah. Like Susan's doing with the Kathy Holden line. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it'd be. And you use a lot of Jen Kingwell, which I've never used. Yeah. Yeah. Do y'all ever sew together? No. Uh -uh. We never have. Why not? Never. Uh, I went. I went to Jacksonville for a photo shoot at her house, which just okay. happened by accident that a photographer was going to be there. Okay. And then we see each other at a couple of different shows. She we've That's invited it. her to retreats and stuff, but she's always too busy. We should just for do us. a retreat with us three. I don't sew well in public. That's part of my problem. Are you, I don't what? do anything. Are well you naked public. or something? What's your problem? <laughs> I get too nervous, and I do, and I talk more than I said. I think, well, I just well, drag a the machine for yeah, nothing. That's, that's a problem. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's so fun to sew I, with other people, though. Like when I went to this retreat this year, I learned so much from Doug Lico, and like he's, I know him. He's my friend. We have done videos with him, but just sitting next to him, he's very methodical. Yeah, you took out that notebook, and you're like, I was like, what's he doing <laughs> yeah. over there? And at one point, I'm looking at Lisa, like, what's he doing? Like he was doing stuff. I'm like, what? What is he doing over there? He was. He's just got a method, and he's just very consistent. 
And I was like, oh, I should do that. I mean, you just learn just from watching someone else. Yeah. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. yeah, no, retreats are fun to do if you're watching. It's very hard for me. I can't concentrate on sewing, listening to that conversation, paying attention to what's going across the room, and listening in on, over here. I mean, come on, that's hard work. Oh, I'll do it all. And then I'm like, you know, I'm really nosy. That's one thing you guys probably don't know. <laughs> but I'm super nosy. Like, let me tell you, at my basketball games, I know which parents are divorced, which parents are fighting, which <laughs> parents are... I, I don't know. I'm just super nosy. And... One time I met this guy, anyway, I knew his whole life story, and Kevin always does the clock. Well, not always, but sometimes. And I'm like, oh, I met so-and-so, and he played for blah, blah, blah. He goes, how did you just figure all that out in an hour? I'm like, he's like, were you even watching the game? He's like, who are you talking to? What were you doing? Like, I, am so, I, I don't talk to people unless I know, unless I can find out about their personal. I am very nosy. So I was, I do listen. Sheesh. I like to use the word curious. Yeah. You're very, you know, being curious is a good thing. Yeah. How do y'all decide what fabric color goes where? I think it's experience. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a hit and a miss, you know? They say when you have a design wall, you need a sidewalk view, a side view, and... I forgot, there's one other view you're supposed to look at it. You're supposed to, like, when you're really looking at something, put it up, walk away from it, and come back in. And, like, I make Sue do that a lot when she comes over here. I'll say, walk in like you haven't even seen anything. And she'll, like, walk in with her back to the wall and then turn, and she'll tell me if she likes these colors. Yeah. Okay. You actually, it, it is. It's a hit or a miss. You know, and, she'll and, say, no. And to know. look through it, uh, like the lens of a camera, or take it now with digital phones, right. take a picture and turn it black and white. So it's not really, to me, about the color. It's more about the value, the lightness right. or the darkness of it. And that's why. No, I do that when I, the complete quilt is up on the wall. Yeah. I do that and turn it all to black and white. Yeah. But not in particular, but just for a little block. Yeah. Margaret asked if you can make some of the blueprint blocks using a layer cake. And you can. Yeah. You just need yeah. a lot of, la you're going to have a lot of waste. But you can use it. Probably take two layer cakes. I mean, I can't off the top of my head do the math. That that's what I, I'm doing mine uh, out of All Star by Stacy. It's a yeah. little sports theme mm -hmm. fabric that's coming out. And so far, I have two layer cakes. Okay. So I might have to add some. I mean, the math is three and a half. So you you know. Yeah, it's like three and a half, six and a half, nine and a half. Yeah. So have have a little extra. Yeah. Of that, but uh, where you start out with the fat eighth bundle or whatever, but that's that, that's the problem in trying to do yardages for scrappy, mm -hmm. is you don't know. Yeah. So. What color and brand of thread do y'all use? I'm pretty much an RFL girl, so. What color? And the color, uh. okay, so the color's always wrong, because I'll always think it's like 2024, then I think, oh wait, did I need 2022? I always forget when I have to go and buy some more, uh -huh. so I end up buying like three different, so I now have like three different shades of that, whatever color I use, well, and I, it's that cream Kim, color. Kimberly I use will know numbers and whatever, but I, surprisingly, I go with, um, in addition to the whites or the lights, but take into consideration a dusty pink, a dusty blue, light blue, those don't show up on, and same with the gray, uh -huh. they don't show up on darks or lights. Uh -huh. So you do have, uh, you know, a few other selections to be able to show. So it's, Yeah, but last time I was here, we talked about it. See, I buy pre-wound bobbins too, so I, oh, that's, um, I, I do that too. Type. I do too. Yeah. I couldn't believe, I'm like, yeah. This speed demon that happened um, to stop. Oh, him. my son winds the bobbins. And I'm almost out, and I kind of warned him. I was like, look, my bobbin. And he's like, oh, my God, it takes two hours. I'm like, I know, but. So I have a son that winds my bobbins. A um, retreat, literally, this is how this is oh. how I counted how fast she, she was. She kept saying, what bobbin are you on? What I bobbin? counted how many bobbins <laughs> she was going through. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. She has this massive case. Of bobbins. Oh my gosh. I don't even think they make that case anymore. They do don't. They? I'm hoard yeah. that case. I have two of them so that I can never, never not have yeah. it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. My pre wound bobbins go for so long. I don't even know how often I change. I, I, I'm not going to even count how many quilts I can go, you know, like how much of a quilt I can go through. Yeah. I use, so I use color Arfield 2000. You probably use 2024 or 2020 or 2023. Or, yeah, I mean, right yeah. around. The, yeah, it's all those. All of those. All of those. It depends on the day and the, what my eyes are seeing for the color I yeah. need. <laughs> and, you know, recently I had a, 
I bought, well, I bought from Fat Quarter Shop a cone and I couldn't find it. And I ran out of my cone and I was like, what am I gonna do? So I, I've almost gone through a whole spool and like a month later, I found my spool. It was like on a, on a, on a shelf. I was like, am I gonna have to buy another spool? Cause they're so expensive. I was like, oh my God, I gotta find that spool. So, I mean, I just, I don't have to use Color 2000, just whatever I have. Yeah. You know, and, and it is expensive. Oh. Don't, don't get me yeah, wrong. Yeah, it is expensive. And not that there's a lot of other good threads out mm. there, um, but it, it does make a difference, you know, the tin for a dollar bucket or wherever. I mean, I want to encourage all quilters, do what you can yeah. with what you have. Yeah. But some of the things like changing your needle, yeah. buying the best thread you can, and changing your rotary cutter blade as often as you can, yeah. make your life so much better in the long yeah. run. And they seem like they're nothing. We forget to do it all the time. But yeah. changing the needle, like if you see that you're when you've sewn your seams together, and not that they pucker, but there's a little... Jagged. Yeah. You're past time to change your needle. Mine, that's really what... Yeah, my, mine recently, I figured out, I sew so fast, as soon as my thread starts breaking, change the needle. Yeah. They say change for every project. I'm not that religious about it. Right. No. Uh, but uh, it's, it's important, you know, yeah. that's... My machine starts sounding like a cha chunk cha chunk cha -chunk. It starts sounding different, yeah. and I realize that's my mm -hmm. needle. It's trying so hard to get through the fabric, and I think, oh, maybe I should change. Yeah. This question, I'm not sure. I, I don't know the answer, so I'm going to let y'all answer. Why aren't more long-arm quilters using cotton thread for the quilting? I heard the poly thread will saw through the cotton fabrics in 10 to 15 years, and then your quilt falls apart. I don't know the answer. Well, you know, Way that, over that, my pay grade. That's, that's <laughs> very much... Um, a topic of conversation but but uh, I know like Matt uh, quilt appraisers you know I went to a lecture with Harriet Hargrave she was very much about like the antique quilts especially when you hand quilted and you would see that the thread basically if your thread is stronger than your fabric, fabric. it could weed through it but the quality of everything is so much better now mm -hmm. the quality of thread of fabric is better that they're sewing with the batting is better all of that kind of stuff that, um, you know, I, and again, I'm not a long armor, so I don't know, but I think just the strength and the speed mm -hmm. at what they're quilting with, it makes it pretty tough for them to use co all cotton. Yeah. So. Yeah, and like for me, I know this sounds bad, but like, I'm just making a quilt. If, if it disintegrates when I die, it's fine. I'm in the grave, it doesn't matter. Like to me, it's just like, oh, I'm just, you know, like I don't care. Nobody's gonna know who I am in 10 years, like when I die, it's fine. Like, whatever. I do, Pick one thing I will there, say, Kimberly. one thing I do think about, that I'm very picky about with long arm quilting, I prefer the thinner thread. So there is a thickness to, there's thicker and thinner poly. I don't like that thicker stuff. Whatever the thinnest is that I can get away with is what I prefer. Yeah. But then, and I don't know the difference, but I know my quilters know. Yeah, that, I mean, that's a great question. If anybody is a long armor and, right. can, and can ride in, or that's a whole, not, a whole nother topic, but uh, that's a whole nother industry on mm -hmm. how and what they can use that, so. There you go, Kimberly. There's a show for you right there. Yeah. yeah. A panel of long armors. Yes. <laughs> what sewing machine do we use? I know Lisa and I use the same one. So we use, uh, T, what is it, TL2010Q, Juki, and then I have a Platinum Edition. I, Doug has got me, I got to text him like for the fifth time, but he's got me convinced to buy this Juki Industrial Machine. Oh my gosh, just, he tried to buy me, get me to buy that. Yeah, I know. So I'm close to buying it. Face. I know, but I'm, I'm close to buying it. He what hasn't you, bought it yet either. I know, so I'm waiting for him to you like. Should, wait, it's like a real industrial machine? Because yes. I'm going to tell you something. It's only I $700. Have, but it has that okay, but when my yeah. Okay, but when my machine went to the shop, you know, it does a fancy schmancy as a Viking. It does a fancy schmancy stuff. I needed a machine that I could just piece with. I bought the Brother 20, I think it's Brother T1500 or something like that. It was like 
I think five or six hundred dollars, maybe. I don't know. I got it from Amazon. I mean, because I could get it the next day. Yeah. And that machine does one stitch and one stitch only, and is super quiet. Before I said that, I said I wanted an industrial machine. They said noise wise, you don't. So that's, that's what I'm right saying. Point, How yeah. loud is that, Juki? Yeah. 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 I mean, that would be my biggest thing. And because I, I read the research to before I ended mm -hmm. up getting the brother. The brother isn't an industrial, but it does everything that the industrial does. It does a fast sewing. It's super quiet, yeah. but it does one stitch. Yeah. It doesn't well, that, do that's what I, I, I love. Also, it. I also have a Bernina, but the majority of my sewing is straight and fast. And that's what a Juki does well. Um, but I've gotten with grandkids and stuff. I'm now on a serger because I want to sew more yes, clothes. clothes. Um, and there's from time to time I need to do a zigzag or, mm -hmm. or different things. So there is merit now to my deal is whatever machine you get, get it local and somebody that can service it mm -hmm. and somebody that can exactly. give you classes. Yeah. Because that's important. Mm -hmm. You get you get home and you're like, oh, what in the world am I gonna do? Mm -hmm. And you don't have any support. Yeah, and that's huge. I would like to see it, hear about that Juki though, because I I truly wanted an industrial machine. My machine has a humongous bed on it. It's really wide and a wide throat. I think it's the throat size uh -huh. is really wide. I really love it. Well, so for the industrial, what I was thinking was I'm gonna put it in my film studio, so it'll be like you know at work. It won't be loud. It won't bother Kevin any more than any of my other machines. But I do so much like flying geese, the Eleanor Burns way. Uh, square in a square paper, half square triangle paper. That's repetitive. You're just like, go, 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 go. I could just cut, bring it to work, sew it in double the time, go home, press it, finish it. You know, like just all that mass sewing. I just, but yeah, so I'm trying I to get would, done. I would worry as fast as you are on the other one. Oh, I'm going to cut my finger that, off. That we're going to need higher insurance on you. Yes, yeah. it would be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And one thing that I do because of the noise is I'll wear headphones and um, that way I can watch my movie and then my iron, cause my iron is so loud, my sewing machine, it drives Kevin yeah. crazy. I'm like, just turn your football up, just turn it up, it's fine. <laughs> just turn it up. What size needle do you use? It really depends on, on the project, like with papers. Okay. I like to use a, a finer, sharper one so it help, kind of helps perforate the papers better. Um, like I, a 90? I, yeah, I pretty much listen to, you know, I have a little book on what size needles to use on okay. what size projects. So, I'm, I mean, I own them all, so. What about you? Um, uh, whatever that little container, you know, that has the multi needles in there. You're like, just, <laughs> not real picky. <laughs> I pretty much use, uh, because of the speed, I use a 90 and I use some kind of chrome or something, yeah, microtex exactly. or something. I like the mi microtex, yeah. If I use a 70 or an 80 at the speed I go, my thread breaks, breaks, yeah. breaks, breaks. I can't, I can't. Okay, I know I don't use a 90 and I'm gonna tell you, I know for a fact I don't use a 90. I, and I think when you say that, I think I probably use closer to a 70. Okay. Yeah, cause it's, it's 90 dash 11, you know, there's yeah, the, 90 dash that, different, whatever. There's 90, 80, 70. Yeah. But I yeah, just yeah, find yeah. that with the, the fastness, my my thread won't break on a 90. Okay, see, I, I don't sew, then I, I really realize, I don't sew as fast as you, Kimberly. Like, I'm my just pedal consistent. is all the way down. If you ever, no, if you ever have the opportunity to go and listen to Rhonda from Schmetz Needles, you need to oh, have yes, her. yes, yes. She'd be great on here. Yeah, she's the, great. The, uh, the science in making a needle yeah. is incredible. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, truly that, the, the weight of the fabric and all the different projects that you use. And like, she'll talk about like the width of the needle, the size of the hole, the length of the hole, the size of the point, the bluntness of the point. It's, yeah, it's, it's over my head, basically. I will tell you I that. have to Google it every time I change yeah. my uh, needle. Yeah, I Google it and say, what, what needle am I supposed to use for? That's yes. what I Google yeah. it. Yeah, that's but, a, but yeah. Somebody, cool. somebody that's so passionate about what she does yes. and, and tells you about it and you're like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. No idea. What color do we tell our long arm quilters to quilt with your go to color? So for me, I just, I they just know I like a light color. I don't know the color. It's not Aurifil. I know that because they use polyester. Yeah. I don't but, know. I mean, that that's again, the, uh, some long armors want you to tell them exactly what to do. Yeah. And that's tough. 
because unless you're gonna, well, one thing I do like to do when I'm trying to find a color of thread is take it off the mm -hmm. spool mm -hmm. and lay it on the yep. project because it does look different mm -hmm. for that. But, um, you know, again, once you get a relationship with who your long armor is, they kind of should know, you know, mm -hmm. you have that relationship because yeah. it's, uh, but some of them do. You tell me exactly what to do, yeah. and I'll do. I don't want any responsibility for yeah. creating a whorehouse quilt or you know whatever. Yeah. whatever. Yeah. So um, that that's a that's a tough one. Yeah, yeah. I think it's different because like you know like RFL two thousand. That's ingrained in my head because that's what I sew with. When I send it to my quilter, I'm trusting them to do that. I don't know anything about polyester thread. I don't know anything about long arm quilting thread. I just kind of leave it to them, trust them, and. Well, and you've seen what they've done. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know, and you can see examples. Right. A lot of times of what batting they've used, mm -hmm. what their, how, how good the quality of their stitches mm -hmm. are. So. Intention matters. One thing I will say that I've had bad experiences with is if you have a quilter and their tension is bad and you turn the quilt over and you can see, if you can see the stitch pull through from the front to the back. Yeah, that little loop. No. Yeah. Don't use them. <laughs> done. And that they haven't changed yeah. their needle. Yes. Right? That's yes. Yeah. where it's really right. important yeah. to have a good needle. Yeah. <laughs> it's so much, so much, right? Yeah, so many things. Uh, we're getting a lot of long arm questions, aren't we? Yeah. What would be a great fat quarter bundle for peppermint rose? It was beautiful. Oh, thank you. Um, Do you have still any of Camille's fabric? <laughs> Which, light lighthearted. There's so many Christmas bundles out there, though. Right. I, yeah. I think that was me. You have that to was... kind of pick and choose between. I mean, I would almost think some of the Minnick and Simpson reds might even work. Yeah, but it. I mean, yeah, okay, it, no. it does have that. But it, you know, lighthearted oh, was yeah, kind of because of the the extra pinks and greens okay. and things in it. But um, oh yeah, it has a lot of lighthearted. Oh yeah. Yeah, her gr her greens really only match her greens. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So basically, lighthearted. Yeah. Yeah, actually, Cam Camille has started sewing. Have you seen that Camille bought the book and is making this oh, quilt? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, oh my gosh, I love her fabric. I just love this quilting right here. Um, Anita says she's 65 and her grandma's quilts are more fluffy. Did they used to be thicker batting? Yeah. Yeah, and That's there like used to just be like cotton batting, polyester batting. Bamboo wasn't even a thing yeah. until like maybe no. Eight years ago? Yeah. And that's really where, when, because batting would also separate. It wasn't yes. near as processed as, as it yeah. is now. So, and maybe she just needed warm stuff, right? You know, yeah. use uh, a couple of layers of batting sometimes. Yeah. So, okay, go to the other page. So, one long arm quilter saying she uses so fine on the top and bottom line on the bottom. Uh -huh. Some people use RFL for domestic machine quilting. The one thing that I've been really wanting to do, I need to get out my Sashiko machine. Oh my I know gosh. I don't say it right. I already know. Yeah, don't yeah, yeah. Me. You have that's. I I gotta get that machine out because I keep seeing it. And Kevin said something to me recently, like, "What is like? You don't ever use it." I'm like, "Well, I just gotta get that out and like oh, do yeah. something with it." Yeah. So I, they're talking about the like superior so fine and some of those. I do love that stuff in my bobbin because uh -huh. it seems like it's fine and a lot more fits on your yeah. bobbin. Yes. So you, have, you don't have to use it, change it as often. So I don't know. Oh, Blendables Thread. Oh, okay. That's who that's by. Okay. Uh, Debbie says, I need to take my bundles apart and my creativity will bloom. And yes, you do. Yes doing more scrappy you know it's funny because people will write in and they'll say you're not really doing scrappy you're doing plan scrappy I'm there, like, but that's it I'm like I'm just doing whatever Kimberly Jolly wants to do I don't have to have a name for it I'm just in my sewing room just doing whatever watching true crime yes true crime yes. fabric sewing machine I'm good there it you is, go it is so hard to pick 12 to even 24 perfect fabrics to make a quilt yeah now you can pick 12 colors and have multiple yep. of those fabrics. That's all what Scrappy is to me. Mm -hmm. Is it still color controlled mm -hmm. and lots of that. So you can have still a light medium and a dark. You can, that's what just gives you movement. And honestly, I just like when I look at it and play with it, mm -hmm. I'm thinking of that person that either mm -hmm. designed it or the color and that just makes me happy. 
So. And it's fun to like give a gift. Like one of my friends from high school, his he's like really into farming. I mean, he's a farmer. So like his kids quilts that I give him are like tractors and John Deere and like green wheels. Black, I don't know, outside dirty tractor or something. But I would never do that for me, but it's fun to make for someone else because then you're like, oh yeah, their kids are like in the dirt with the pigs. It's fun, it's cute. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about, because you guys went to market, is what were the new trends at market? One thing I heard was the clothing. Yeah, I love the clothing, yeah. yes. What yeah. trends do yeah, you Yeah, I'm not notice? making clothing. Huh? I saw a lot of clothing, but you won't see me making clothing. Yeah, me either. No, no, no. that's what stores I, you know, are I would, for. I, no, I, well, I would have said that before, but you know, my first entry to sewing was at Benjamin Franklin learning to mm -hmm. do clothing. I was probably this tall in third grade, so of course none of the patterns fit, fit. me, and yeah. you know, you know, I just, I, it wasn't going to work in a little puffy sleeve outfit, you know, yeah. wh whatever, so I'm like, I'm done. Plus, my older sister was a home ec major, so I couldn't compete with that. So I, I didn't have any interest in it. But uh, clothing patterns are written for clothing makers. Yes. Now there's enough patterns, clothing patterns, that are written by quilters mm -hmm. that have the same talk as we have. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tammy Vonderschmidt at, at my work, actually at Retreat, we yeah, made. Yeah, she made lots of pants. We made pants, yeah. And, uh, I thought, oh, whatever. So I just brought an old cutter quilt. Oh, she made some and cute made it. And I'm like, I love it. I love it. I'm so, I just, you know, you can only wear it so much without people thinking, you know, you're at the grocery store and it's like, mm, that girl's <laughs> got a problem. Uh, but I made uh, another pair of more at market. But jackets and people buying yes. sweatshirts and embellishing yes. them with stuff. And uh, what's so crazy Ralph Lauren, I mean, oh yes. Uh, uh, actually, this is a really funny partnership. Uh, Laura Ashley partnered with Lucky Brand. Okay. And have, have really, a, yeah, like uh, so. I like I like have a wrap that's like blue and white patchwork that oh. was from that, and then white jeans that had denim patchwork in it. So I mean, it's like high price fashion now, but yeah, yeah it's. The, the patterns are so much easier because they're written in quilt speak in a lot of it, so. What colors were trending at market? Ooh. Susan, do you have uh, anything? I mean, you I- know, I, You know what, I, I go in kind of tunnel vision. I think, oh my gosh, that's the cutest Halloween fabric ever. And yeah. then I'll say, oh, how cute is that for Christmas? I didn't, I don't look at the trends. I look at how cute the fabric was, yeah. so I didn't really pay. I'm the well, wrong I, yeah. person to ask. I think the, the reds continue to go to the sherberts and the melons and uh -huh. stuff like that um there's aubergine you know this mm -hmm. really unusual purple stuff happening um i've seen a lot of purple yeah yeah that's like yeah i have a stack of purples i don't use purples yeah uh, I don't either, but you know what? I just recently did, and I will tell you this. I kind of like throwing a just a touch in there. It's kind of like you know that little drop of a flavoring in a, like a stew or something. Uh -huh. It really just added a a, a little well, well, a little I, lift. It I, was kind of fun. Susan, I don't know about about you, but that's the same with. I've always said orange is my favorite color. Oh, yeah. Because it was at the time that's the only, I could buy that as an antique quilt because nobody liked orange right. until the whole. Right. world of stuffed pumpkins happened but the color is better and the same with a purple it's a yep. better purple, purple than mm -hmm. you know right some sort of chrome big you know bright color but what's the brand of bobbins right. that you use i know we ended up carrying them after we did that susan but people are asking and of course i don't remember okay it's like nc S or NSC or something like that i can go i'd leave here and go look but it's okay. all would come like not what we all scream <laughs> on our site yeah um okay so anything else you guys want to add oh we have more at the end we have giveaway and i have a shout out so i have a very special shout out to a customer named tamsin patterson from canterbury new england she's a quilter with an amazing stash and she's fighting cancer with the help of her dear quilting friends 
So Tamsin, thank you for being here with me every Friday and we're rooting for you and your cancer recovery. And I am like enamored with your stash and I definitely notice a trend of blue and white and red and white. So cool. So shout out to Tamsin. Stay strong, keep fighting. We're rooting for you, sending you our love and everyone throw your support in for Tamsin in the comments. Anything y'all wanna add before we do the giveaway? Can we do another book all together? I'm looking forward yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, after, yeah. After, okay, so after Christmas, can we all talk? Yeah. Okay. No, no pressure there. No, yeah. <laughs> no pressure, Lisa. Come on, get with the program here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about them. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're going to give away three of the Celebrate books in a fun Moda bag to three winners and to enter to win, what we want you to do is comment and let us know what is your favorite quilt from the book and what is the favorite fabric combination from the book that you love because it's always fun for us to see what you like and what trend, you know, I'm always looking for trends and what people are really loving. And you have until Wednesday, November 29th. Ashley will pick winners on Thursday, November 30th. Make sure you subscribe to the Fat Quarter Shop newsletter because Black Friday is right around the corner. I hope all of you have a wonderful Thanksgiving, um, but definitely subscribe to the newsletter so that you don't miss the Black Friday deals. And I'll be off next Friday. Working. to celebrate thanksgiving right? yes yes well i will be filling black friday orders okay. next friday <laughs> um but i hope everybody has a wonderful thanksgiving thank you yes, so much you for so much. coming and thank you for having us yes so fun i hope we answered all of your questions